Ah, sorry, didn't see you there. I was just waxing my rocket. You must be here about the Kerbal Space Program Hardcore Mode. The only series where the only thing that fills up faster than the tech tree is the graveyard. In hardcore mode, there are no do-overs. If I fail a mission three hours into it, I have to do it again. If a Kerbal perishes, they're gone for good. Re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere is brutal. Kerbals need life support and science payouts are set to 60%, meaning to complete the tech tree, the Void Space Program will have to explore further into the cosmos than ever before. Last time we launched a bunch of small rockets, got into orbit, unlocked science, landed a probe core on the MUN, and killed two Kerbals. This time we're going to set foot on the MUN, explore the other moon of Kerbin, try to perform a rescue mission during re-entry of the atmosphere, crash out a couple times, oh my god, <laughs> construct the most beautiful relay network ever, probably kill some more Kerbals, and above all, collect much, much more science. So, to start, the scientists at the VSC have unanimously decided to start a new program to explore the other moon of Kerbin. It is as of yet completely untouched by Kerbal Kind. Located just a little bit farther away from Kerbin than the Mun is, it's actually easier to get there than the Mun because it requires less Delta V. But what is Delta V anyways? It's literally defined as a change in velocity. Every burn your rocket makes in KSP changes the meters per second your craft is traveling at. And for our purposes, it'll be enough to think of it as something of a fuel gauge. And it can be used to determine what your craft can do and how far it can go. So naturally, I designed a rocket with way more Delta V than what was needed, and thus began the Mint program. The Mint probe's job was a simple one. Land on the surface of Minmus and transfer back all of that sweet, sweet science. We got into Kerbin orbit, set up our encounter, got into a low orbit around Minmus, decided that a lake would be a nice spot to land, and came in for a landing. Things were looking good. The probe had power, and was on target and coming in at a good speed, and... Oh my gosh, I just fat fingered the time accelerator. This sucks, bro. <laughs> oh well, back to the space center. The Mint program was then promptly shelved. It wasn't a complete loss because before exploding, Mission Control had the foresight to transmit some of the science back from Minmus, allowing us to pick up one of the best parts in the game, the external fuel duct. <laughs> Thus, increasing our fuel transferring abilities exponentially. The Kerpalo Probe Mark III was constructed with the goal of not only collecting MUN science, but also bringing it back for extra science points. This time, fuel ducts were added, making the rocket far more efficient. After a journey to the MUN, we came in for a surface landing and Passvoid had a few thoughts on the matter. Nice and easy, nice and easy. There's no reason to explode. I don't know what the landing tolerance on this freaking thing is, but I, I can't imagine it's that high. This one was tense. My craft landed and then immediately flipped over. A critical design problem that permeates the VSC. Most craft are top heavy and therefore stupid. But there was no redesigning this probe. It was already on the MUN. We had to flip this thing over or the Capallo Probe Mark III was going to be a complete failure. I paused the game, collected myself, and went for it. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Working as intended. But can it be salvaged is the real question. I don't know. I almost had it. I almost had it. I got scared. I got scared. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm in a better position. I'm in a better position. Full send. Full send. No, no. <laughs> At least some science was transmitted, and we had just enough to collect advanced flight control, giving us access to better control for our craft and monopropellant thrusters. Something I definitely should have added into the next mission. This mission was ambitious. Audacious, even bodacious, one might say. We are going to put boots down on the mud, and then come back. We were going to take the first steps on a different body than Kerbin. We were going to change Kerbal kind forever. Dobo and Bob were therefore loaded into the capsule and were sent on a mission that would require me to activate my frontal cortex, but not in the way you might be thinking. Three, two, one, blast off.
The first steps on the Mun weren't really steps at all. It was more of a bonk. But regardless, it was a momentous occasion. We took a couple of photo ops, planted the flag, dedicated that flag to those who got us here to begin with, gathered up some surface science, and then gathered up the rest of the science all that we could and set off the moon and made our way back home. But this is when things got a little bit interesting. Looking down at the fuel gauge, I saw something quite alarming. We were left with only 380 Delta V. Nani? This was enough to make it back into Kerbin orbit, but not enough to deorbit the way I want to. I settled on using the atmosphere of Kerbin to burn off some speed, but not come in so steep that the craft explodes. So we burned to put our periaps at 60,000 meters above the surface. I was hoping this was the sweet spot, and then we got to work. Every single pass shed off more and more meters per second, until when trying to reorient the craft, I suddenly realized that I had no control and couldn't move it at all. I had completely forgotten about the Kerbal's life support. Time warping around the planet had used up all that I had and both Kerbals had gone on strike refusing to work at all. This was bad, because while eventually the craft would eventually deorbit itself, I had no way of deploying the parachutes to allow them to land safely. If the VSC didn't launch a rescue mission to save these Kerbals, then Dobo and Bob would be lost forever, as well as all of the science on board their craft. This situation was dire. The rescue craft was hastily assembled with three command pods and a week's worth of life support. We had to rendezvous in orbit, and not just any rendezvous, because the orbit of the Kripalo craft dipped into the atmosphere, so the rescue mission would have to do that as well. Completely determined to save the science on board and the Kerbals, the rescue mission Mark 1 was launched from the VSC and actually got into an encounter with the Mun craft shortly before re-entry began. Bob then pulled up, and this was when the most horrifying component of this situation was discovered. Both Kerbals and their Kapala Mark IV did not have functional jetpacks, meaning when they let go of the latter, they were more or less drifting into space and unable to maneuver at all. One wrong move meant that they were lost in space forever. Messing with us for a while, eventually everything started heating up. I put Dobo back inside of the craft to save his life, and then we had to endure re-entry together. On the other side of Kerbin, we were able to get nearby again, and once again, I tried to save the Kerbals. I'm being serious when I tell you, this was the most ridiculous, aggravating, tedious operation I've ever conducted in KSP. Both craft were sword fighting, there was no monopropellant on board to make maneuvering easier, there were no jetpacks to fly the Kerbals over. Both the crafts were almost out of fuel, and worst of all, this operation was on a timer. I had to get this done before re-entry came again. I eventually discovered a strategy where I could line up one craft, then eject the Kerbal and rotate the other so they could grab a hold of the ladder. It was absolutely miserable. I did indeed accomplish this task, and with the last bit of remaining fuel came in for re-entry, while the other craft burned up in the atmosphere. The rescue mission touched down safely, was recovered, and all of the engineers breathed a sigh of relief. I patted myself on the back, loaded back into the VSC, and I forgot to grab the sign. I then took a completely unrelated three-day break from KSB, and upon reloading, sent up the Kripalo Mark V. This time, just a month flyby in return. It went well, with no problems, and used the science to unlock better landing parts for future missions. The Mint program was then brought out of retirement, but this time with a crew. It's the exact same craft as the Mun mission we just did, so it was easy to design. We launch off Kerbin again, get into a Minmus encounter, and then I actually burn to crash with Minmus. The reason for this is so that we can jettison our extra fuel tanks and have them explode on the surface instead of being stuck in orbit as space trash. I time warp a little, then notice something horrible. I once again have no control of my craft. The Kerbals are once again on strike. This time I had completely forgotten about life support, and the Mint Mark II is on a collision course with Minmus. This time there was actually nothing I could do. The engineers back home beg and plead with Dobo just to snap out of it and do one small burn to save their lives. But the scientists' cries fall on deaf ears. All that could be done was time warp and wait for the inevitable. Two more flags were therefore erected for Dobo and Hazy Kerman. But the mood isn't as sad as the other ones. To be honest, it's kind of their own fault. Another minor mission was then launched. The Mint Mark III was launched just to scout out the surface of Minmus. It went well and physically brought back some science, giving us information about high and low Minmus orbit. Then, something interesting. 
During many of the probe missions so far, we would temporarily lose control of our probes because they would lose connection to Kerbin. In this game, it is possible to set up something known as a relay network. Normally, if your craft can't make a connection back to Kerbin, then you can't transmit science or really even control it. But a relay can help bridge that gap. I designed a craft that can hold four relay satellites at a time and send it up. It blew up once again, but we got it on the second try. The engineers back on the ground made it abundantly clear that we need to put our craft in an elliptical orbit, and then try to place our relays so that we can triangulate around Kerbin. This was achieved with one, two, three, and just for the last one to get more coverage, we placed it in a polar orbit, just in case that might help. When completed, the relay network looks just like this. It's pretty to look at, and theoretically a signal coming at Kerbin from any angle should be able to be beamed back home. Excellent, so now that we have a bit more space infrastructure set up, it's time for the final mission in this episode. We're going to land on the Mun and come back. I do not care how many Kerbals perish, how many science points are exploded, or how many millions of tax dollars are wasted. We're going there, landing, coming back, and we're going to collect full science. The Kerpalo Mark VI, I'm not, I'm not sure, was then launched, a truly magnificent piece of technology, a revolution in Kerbal endeavors. It was exactly the same rocket as before, but with one extra liquid fuel tank. Incredible. It launched off, collects science in high and low MUN orbit, lands on the surface, more science is collected, another photo op is taken, a few words are spoken to immortalize this moment in history. And then, it comes back home. All without any unplanned explosions, and above all, it makes me smile. After 10 hours of playtime, I have landed a Kerbal on the Mun and brought them back without a single issue. Pick up heavy rocketry, aerodynamics for plane shenanigans, and then advanced construction for all the th thingies. Thanks for watching until the end, and hit that sub button for part 3, like the video for the algorithm, and goodbye.